the FIM Asian Road Racing Championship brings us back to Malaysia and back to Pasir Gudang, the circuit on the outskirts of Johor Bahru, where this series began back in April, some six months ago. On the way to its return visit to Johor for this final round of the series, we've also been to Nakhon Chasri in Thailand, to India's premier racetrack near Madras, the long and fast central raceway in Indonesia, and most recently to the picturesque freeport of Subic Bay in the Philippines. Returning now to what is arguably the most attractive and challenging of the circuits they've seen all season. Just less than four kilometres long, the Johor racetrack is actually at Pasir Gudang, about 30 kilometres from Johor Bahru itself. The front straight is not the longest, and the 250s will just miss out on the 200 kilometres an hour mark before they start braking to a half that speed and grab second gear to go right. They'll need to get on the gas early and get good drive. This is the longest and fastest straight, but it goes uphill, so they must get the exit from the previous corner right. They'll be flat in sixth at 215 when they start to break and go left into the fastest corner on the circuit, sweeping uphill at 175. Now down to second gear, under 100. A long left, a short burst into third, and then going right again at 120, going for the brakes, grabbing second gear, down to around 90. Stay in second, hard on the gas, third and fourth, running over the crest, Downhill towards the fourth gear, right-hander. You must carry as much speed as you can through this part of the track because afterwards the circuit climbs away uphill again. Now accelerating hard over the crest at 140 kilometers an hour. There's a third gear left, which you take at around 125 and then get ready to stand it on its nose as you run down to the chicane, take a second gear, 80 k's, drop quickly downhill and swing tight left. Grab first and immediately start climbing up through the box. Second, third and fourth as you reach the left kink, breaking down to second for the last right-hander and out onto the pit straight at around 100, head down and aiming for the breaking point 400 metres ahead. Until today, this was just another shopping mall. But today, the riders of the Asian Road Racing Championship are in town, joined on stage by the man they used to call the Clown Prince of Grand Prix Racing, Randy Mamola. A formidable racer in his own right, Randy has often grabbed more headlines from his antics off the racetrack than from his considerable list of successes on it. And that easygoing personality comes across straight away in these Meet the Riders sessions. There's still plenty of chance for him and for the riders in the championship to demonstrate their skills in a way that all of us can relate to on the arcade machines you find all over the world. What you don't get all over the world, of course, are the autographs, the posters and the T-shirt, or the friendly enthusiasm of all of the riders. This is an opportunity for people to meet real-life heroes which is unfortunately rare in most forms of motorsport and totally absent from some. And this is the first time we've seen the number one plate on a 250 all season. Returning to the series for the first time since he became champion here one year ago is Petronas rider Charles Yuzi, who's been racing in Europe all through this 1997 season and learned a great deal from it, even though it has been tough going, and now he's pleased to be back. I come back here for, I see my supporter here, and I need to try help my teammate coming in. Uh, after, just important, I coming back for, I see, for see my supporter. Someone else who's been absent from the series for precisely one year is Kenny Roberts. 
The triple world champion is, of course, a successful team owner in Grand Prix, now building his own Grand Prix bike with Malaysian manufacturer Modernus, but he also runs a team in this series and remains committed to the region and to the championship. Well, I believe in this type of championship. Uh, we started it in Spain some years ago. It's kind of fragmented now. It's not really doing what, it's, what it did three or four years ago. Um, a lot of the graduates from that school are now in Grand Prix and 500 Grand Prix. Um, this isn't quite there yet, but uh, this is the only system in which that, that it will get there. So, yeah, we're very interested in it and what happens next year. Of course, we don't know yet, but uh, we're still interested in this kind of championship. At the Part of the Sunday morning celebrations at this final round of the series included not only the highly successful and well-attended pit walkabout, but a new attraction, as Randy Mamola picked three people at random out of the grandstand and gave them what was billed as the ride of their lives. Perched on the back of a 250 Yamaha, the three lucky ones were whizzed round to fast laps of the circuit, an experience they're unlikely to forget. <laughs> 250 qualifying this weekend was a little unusual in that the championship battle was the focal point of the race, and for points leader Chow Yan Kit, neither pole position nor victory in the race were an ultimate goal. What he had to achieve over the two days of qualifying was to find a machine set up that was safe, comfortable and on the pace. He didn't need a razor edge qualifying lap nor an engine tune to maximum output. His job was far more important. You don't need to win. Yeah, but I hope I have a podium finish. Yeah. I'm fighting, trying to get a podium finish for this race. Yeah. A year ago, Kenny Roberts watched his team race here at Johor. Now it's all a very different story with a championship to win and a very different rider up front. Uh, Kit's riding very well. You know, last year he was our new guy and worked with him in the winter at the school. And it's nice to see that kind of pay off and, and see him actually uh, showing us his talent is getting better on the racetrack as well. You know, winning the championships of frosting on the cake but uh, it's nice to see him performing well. The man with the hardest job of all this weekend is Petronas rider Quan Meng Heng. Toppled from his bike and his championship lead at Sentel, he arrives here at Johor knowing that his best may simply not be enough. Winning the race cannot, by itself, win him the title unless Kit runs into trouble. You have to win, and winning isn't enough, right? Yeah. If, yeah, if, if I win, then he'll be out from, I mean, what, top six, and I'll win the championship. If he's out from the race, all I have to do is to be in top three. So, I don't know. <laughs> After the first practice sessions on Friday, Colin Marshall's lead rider, Matt Patterson, said he thought he'd need a 137 lap to get the pole position in this race, and he was right. It was all very close among the top three riders until the last moments of the final session when Matt dug deep for one really big lap, and it paid off. And when you're sort of on it, you know. I think you know when you've, you've got a good lap in. Right. Scary? It can be, but that's the fun of it. <laughs> Series leader Chow Yan Kit 
brings a 16-point advantage into this final round, which isn't unbeatable, but is fairly secure. Second place, Meng Heng is the only person who can catch him now, but even he can't win the title by winning the race. He needs Kit to lose the championship by finishing lower than sixth place. It's one of those situations where it sounds as if Kit and Team Roberts have got the title in the bag, and for that reason alone, Kit and the team are probably twice as keyed up on the start line as the Petronas outfit and Quan Meng Heng. If he falls chasing Kit, then he was doing what he had to do. But if Kit falls chasing sixth place, then he'll have made a silly mistake and thrown away a certain crown. In real life, this is not an enviable situation to be in. Nor is it. So he's got a very comfortable race to finish six if Meng Heng wins the race. So he's got a very comfortable race as far as that goes. Yeah, a lot of pressure, but I, I believe Kit's handling it quite well. Ever since we've been here this weekend, he's felt comfortable all, all, all through the weekend, and, you know, it's shown. It's his second full season now on the 250 class, and he's shown a lot of promise. He's climbed up the ladder. He won the last race in the Philippines. You know, going into this race, he has to finish sixth if Meng Hang wins the race. So he's got it very comfortably as far as that goes. But with the King here, that's just an added pressure. King Kenny himself the team owner, uh, puts a little bit more weight on his shoulders, but uh, I'm sure the kid will do quite well.